What's up guys, Jads here, and in this video I'm going to give an overview of everything new you can expect in the 1.4 update coming to RimWorld. The last update of this magnitude dropped July 2021 right before Ideology did, so this is a big one. The devs have said that this update brings major performance boosts to the game, increasing load times for game launch and save games by about 37%. So first let's look at the new UI features. First, we have the snazzy new options menu, which is a lot more user friendly. We have a couple new options as well. We can set our menu background to be random every time you launch the game. And you can also adjust screen shake, you know, when explosions or mortars or things like that occur in game. The mod menu has also gotten an overhaul and is now a lot easier to keep organized. Obviously, all the mods are showing is incompatible because of this update except Green World for some reason. <laughs> the devil works hard, but the Green World modder works harder. In game, there has been a tile inspector added. Uh, you hold alt and it will display the room stats and beauty for whatever tile your cursor is over. This is a super convenient way to get info without having to turn on the overlays. And speaking of overlays, we now have a new heat overlay, which I love. Previously, you could only get this with a mod. And now this is minor, but the dev menu has been tweaked a bit. Uh, it feels more organized and you can also pin your most used dev commands to a dev palette. As someone who uses dev mode a lot to make videos, I love this feature. So now let's pop into a new game and take a look at the new content added in. First off, your starting colonists might have some items in their inventory already upon landing. So here one guy has beer and another actually has a jacket on him. <laughs> this gives people a little bit more personality, so I like that a lot. Once in game, we have a lot more control over color now. Red, green, and blue lamps have been removed from the base game, and instead, once you complete the colored lights research, you can select a light and manually set its color. This opens up a ton of possibilities for fun mood lighting in different rooms. There is also a plant that produces color dye called Tinctoria that was added in Ideology, but has now been added to the base game with 1.4. Once you harvest this plant, you can use it to paint buildings. So here I can mark walls and furniture to be painted any of these colors, and my pawn assigned to art will grab dye and bring it over uh, with a little painter's palette and paint. We also have a ton of new carpet colors. You do have to choose its color from the moment of install. You cannot paint it once you've laid it down. You can, however, paint wooden and stone floors using the specific paint floor command in the floors menu. We also have some new turret types added, the foam turret and the rocket swarm turret. The foam turret will shoot fire foam to put out fires within its range. It has to be activated manually by a colonist. Uh, it's not automatic like a fire foam popper. It will spray out fire foam in the vague direction of the fire uh, and it will spray a slightly different area every time your colonist sets it off. Then we have the rocket swarm turret, which is a bit more advanced. Your colonist will manually fire it and you select the target just like with a mortar. It has a fairly long cooldown time in my opinion though for how limited this range is. So I'm not sure if I'm a fan of it. I'd like to hear your thoughts about this new turret. There's also a new type of utility pack that can be worn and used by firefighters. It's called the Fire Foam Pop Pack. Your pawn wears it and can trigger it when near a fire or if they're on fire themselves to release a burst of fire foam. Another new addition that I think is gonna make a significant difference to the way a lot of people set up their bases is that corpses will now emit rot stink gas as soon as they rot. Colonists exposed to it for extended periods of time can get a disease called lung rot. So this is a new incentive to not keep piles of dead bodies around other than just your typical debuffs. As for new items, a new mini one tile shelf has been added and just your basic double shelf has been modified to allow three stacks per tile. So six stacks of items for the normal double shelf and three stacks for the new mini one. This is a great feature. It definitely makes storage better without any mods needed. When you select each shelf, there are buttons that allow you to select the specific stack on the shelf. Um, and you can also now link shelves into a group that shares settings. So if you change the storage settings on one, it will automatically change it on all the others linked. Now some cute little visual changes are that after you chop trees, a stump appears that can be chopped for an additional two wood. Um, and damaged trees, you know, brought down by an explosion or a fire, will appear as smashed stumps instead of chopped. There's also been a new hairstyle added, bald, finally. And there's also been a new room type added, a storeroom. There's also a new prisoner type called an unwavering prisoner. Uh, this is someone who can never be recruited. And this seems to exist essentially to encourage the player to engage in other unsavory prisoner related practices other than recruitment. Um, and you can toggle this off in the storyteller settings if you want. There were also a number of minor tweaks made to the base game without adding new content. I'm not gonna list them all here uh, because some of the tweaks you know, are very difficult to show <laughs> on video, but some noteworthy ones are that pyromaniacs will now get a buff from being near fire, whether that's a wildfire, torches, campfires, I love that. Pawns can now rearm turrets while drafted. 
and then we have that ascetics won't get a debuff from eating nutrient paste and kind of in that same vein wild people won't get a debuff from sleeping outside rest has been renamed to sleep in the needs tab and speaking of rest, pawns will now wake up to eat if hungry instead of waiting until they're fully rested. There has also been a cut all blight option added when selecting one blighted plant and a button to build a hopper when you select a paste dispenser along with a geothermal generator button if you select a geyser. There are several other little convenient tweaks like that. There are also a number of small changes if you have royalty and ideology. Uh, I don't think any of them are major enough to show here, except for that ideology buildings have now been partitioned out into their own architect tab. Oh, and also when you're crafting items that have like styles available, you can now set what style you want to be crafted in the item bill. So that's it for the 1.4 update. I'm a little sad about all the incoming broken mods, but I have faith that most of them will be updated soon enough. Plus, this update will also kind of force me to experience the upcoming biotech DLC in the vanilla game, which I do prefer whenever I'm checking out a new expansion pack. So let me know down in the comments if you've already switched over to 1.4, and if so, what you think of the new additions. As always, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.